morning guys, it's Tell with Oshawa Bushcraft. It's uh, 7 a.m. on October 2nd. Uh, me and the dogs are out here on uh, the Whippy Shore again. Let me turn this sucker off. Now, many of you will have seen that uh, I posted some videos from Algonquin Park uh, from last weekend. Uh, Jordan and I were up there for four days. And uh, while I was up there, uh, I had my old uh, Coleman Lantern out. And I was surprised some of the campers that came around uh, who hadn't seen one of these before. And I was shocked that anybody wasn't familiar with a Coleman Lantern. Uh, my oldest memories of camping are my dad trying to light a Coleman Lantern up in Algonquin Park when I was probably six or seven years old. Uh, so I thought I would put this little video together as a, a basic introduction to uh, a young bushcrafter or young campers who maybe never seen these before. Uh, to give them just enough working knowledge to uh, know if this will suit them and if they see one somewhere to be able to go out and uh, assess what it is and buy it and maybe find the information they need to maintain it themselves. Uh, I got a lot of information to cover here today uh, so I took some notes. Uh, again this is not going to be a how-to manual or a review or uh, a, a full list on how to operate or maintain one of these. Uh, because there's lots and lots of videos out there. There's lots of information available. I'm not going to go over it all again. Uh, again, this is just going to be a basic intro for uh, uh, the, the average bushcraft for what they need to know about these. Um, I've worked with Coleman lanterns and stoves a lot. Uh, Canadian Army was still issuing them uh, when I was in. And you'd work with these things on a daily basis. You'd cook all your meals on a Coleman stove. Uh, in the wintertime, one of these would heat your, uh, your Arctic tent. So, why they're good for bushcrafting. Um, Coleman is a very old Canadian company. I believe they were originally founded in Toronto. Uh, they've been making stuff for, I believe, 100 years. Again, if I mistake any of this, by all means, please post it up in the comments uh, and correct me. I'm not uh, a collector and I'm not a, a professional at restoring these, so if I miss some details somewhere, please let me know. Um, they've made equipment for both the Canadian and the American armies for the Second World War, and I imagine a whole lot since then. Uh, like I said, the Canadian Army is still using them to this day. Uh, the lanterns in particular, and the stoves, are 100% mechanical. There is really nothing in this that cannot be taken apart and rebuilt or uh, restored or maintained and cleaned, and these things go on for, for decades. Um, really for what you need in the field there's really nothing on this you couldn't take apart with just your Leatherman or a Gerber multi-tool. Uh, Alright guys maybe I'm going to cover uh, the basic operation on how one of these suckers works. Alright what you have here is a canister full of fuel. You have a valve inside of uh, this collar. You have a pipe, uh, a little tube called a generator. It runs up inside here and then you have a mantle in there. That little uh, uh, sack if you can see it hanging there. The way this sucker works is there's a pump on the back here. You open it up and you pump the tank up full of pressure. Once it's pressurized you open a valve which releases gas up through the generator and into the mantle. When you light it uh, the heat from the mantle will heat the generator and it will self pressurize. So once you've primed it and lit it It'll maintain its own pressure and it'll run like you saw it running before for 8, 10, 12 hours. Depends on the size of the tank. Now, the light you're actually seeing come out of these is not the actual burning fuel. What you're seeing is the materials the mantle is made out of, which don't ask me to actually recite what they are. But when they're heated up, they produce that blinding white light. You're not actually seeing the fire, you're seeing the light being emitted by the mantle. All right, the fuel these things run on is known by many names. And actually they run on a few different fuels. Um, they can run on either naphtha, unleaded gasoline, or kerosene. Naphtha uh, is known by many names. Sometimes it's called uh, Coleman fuel, or camping fuel, or white gasoline. And my understanding of it is it's essentially gasoline 
with all the extra additives that are put in it to make your car run right, removed. It's just the pure, like distilled petroleum. And Coleman adds two little uh, additives to theirs. One to uh, stabilize it so it will store for a long time. And another one to prevent corrosion so it doesn't rust inside your tank or inside the can. Uh, I should have brought the can with me. I'll, uh, I'll try and throw a photo up at the end of this video. Um, you can run unleaded gas in them. Uh, if you go on the forums, guys have been debating this for 20 years, and I imagine the debate's not going to end anytime soon. They will run on gasoline. Uh, some of them are specifically designed to run both. But uh, in my experience, the gas is a lot dirtier. You're cleaning them out a lot more. It smokes. Uh, from a safety standpoint, you spill gasoline. It can linger for quite a while. You could have a gas spill on your clothes for a few hours. You could go to light this thing later and light yourself on fire. Whereas the naphtha seems to evaporate like alcohol. It's gone pretty quick. So, in my opinion, I like to run the actual Coleman fuel naphtha in them. Uh, it lasts a lot longer. It can be stored like for a long time. Uh, it doesn't smell as bad as gasoline. So if you want to play with these things in the house, the wife doesn't know about it. And uh, like I said, it's a lot safer. It evaporates very quick. It's not as much of a fire hazard. All right, guys, about fuels. All right. Some of these lanterns run Coleman Camp Fuel, naphtha, and some of them run kerosene. Um, there's ways of telling the difference. Uh, Google it. You can look it up. There's, uh, there's videos on it. Uh, what you're going to buy is up to you. Me personally, I have a Coleman stove that runs naphtha. I have a Coleman space heater that runs naphtha. It just makes sense for me to stick with one fuel through everything. Now, if out at your camp or uh, your hut or your deer camp or whatever you're running, maybe you have a kerosene heater already and you're already stocking kerosene, it might be worth your while to look up a kerosene lantern. That would make sense. All right, how to recognize a Coleman. So, if you are out at a flea market or a yard sale, you're looking at Kijiji ads or uh, maybe you're at an auction and you see a lantern go up and you want to know if it's a Coleman lantern, there's some easy ways to tell and know exactly what you're looking at. Now, if it's a Coleman, it's going to have the name Coleman written on it. I've only ever read about one model that didn't have the name written on it somewhere. What you're going to find is the name stamped right on the font, big letters, Coleman, or it's going to be stamped in this color. You're going to find the word Coleman. If you see that, it's a Coleman lantern. All right, guys. One of the great things about these Coleman lanterns is there's still lots and lots of them available. This one here is a model 236. It was made in 1948. You, I can tell this, the date's stamped right on the, the font. Uh, all I did when I bought this was clean it, put a mantle on it, and it runs great. Uh, when I, I didn't know what I was getting when I bought this. I bought it blind off Kijiji. I got home, put the model number into Google, and I saw it referenced to, somebody referred to it as the brightest and most powerful lantern Coleman ever made. Like, Wicked. Sounds good to me. Uh, you could spend, I believe these are selling on sale right now for $79 at Canadian Tire, which is a, a local big box store up here. You don't have to spend that. You, you go on uh, Kijiji and you could find one for $20 or $40. Um, and with a little bit of work, 99% of the time, you can get them up and running. Um, basically, you're going to want to avoid any backup dogs that have any serious damage on them. Uh, big dents or cracks or a lot of rust. The one exception to this is if the globe's broken, the globes are readily available. But you got to factor in another $15 or so to replace a globe. Um, other than that, yeah, the, ideally the ad you're looking for on Kijiji is where the guy says, the title is, Old Coleman Lantern Works. That's the one to go look for. The guy puts more information in it than that and wants to refer to model number, condition, and everything. There's a good chance he's a collector or somebody who knows what it's worth. And if it doesn't work, um, you never know what you're getting into if you don't know about these. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to throw a few little tips I had for you from uh, my experience working with these. This is not a full how-to on how to use them, but just some things I've, I've realized over the years. Uh, fueling. Uh, buy yourself the little Coleman funnel and put it on a carabiner and hook it right on your gas can so you have no excuse not to use it. It's like a buck and a half. It will pay for itself just in the fuel you spill on the first can. So buy a little funnel and use it. Trust me. Uh, when you're fueling these things, oh, and before you try lighting one, fuel it right up before you light it. 
uh, they're just, it's easier to pressurize and it's a lot easier and safer to light if it's got a full tank on it. So trust me, fuel it up before you try and light it. Uh, when you fuel it, take it somewhere else out of camp, away from where you're going to light it. Fuel it up, then bring it into camp, light it up. That way if you spilled some fuel on the ground, you're not lighting it on top of that fuel. Alright guys, so um, one other note is uh, if you're going to take these into a tent or a shelter, light them outside the tent. Wait till they're running really good, then bring them in the tent. Uh, a lot of times these are used for heat. Uh, sometimes when you light these things up, uh, you get a big flame out of here and it's a good way to burn a tent down. Trust me on this one. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend these Coleman lanterns. Now, this is not uh, a minimalist piece of kit. This is not a piece for the, the lightweight backpacker. These things, especially the old ones, they weigh a fair bit. You're not fitting this into a rucksack. This could be for car camping. This could be if you're setting up a base camp. It's worth bringing in uh, a Coleman lantern and stove, but um, they have their, their specific uses. Uh, I highly recommend an older one. They're the, the, I don't know exactly what the year ranges are, but the older ones were still built in the USA and Canada, and they are considerably heavier. Just picking one up compared to a new one on the shelf, you know the difference right away. All right, guys, that's it for next time. I could do a four-hour video on these things easy. There's so much information out there, but put it into Google. I highly recommend the Coleman Collectors Forums, which I'll put uh, a link for in the comments here. Uh, until next time, get outside and have some fun, guys. YouTube will be here when you get back.